That's law. Let's go. We don't like wasting time on this channel. Rule number one. And that is law. Rule number one. Please, whatever I'm about to tell you right now, put it down. You get why. <laughs> if the reaction have a particular delta H, the revise we have the opposite delta H. I will take it again, write it down. If a reaction have a particular delta H, the revise will have the opposite delta H. Look at what I'm talking about. If you have A plus B to give you a reaction C, and let's say the delta H is, is equal to plus 100. If you revise this reaction, Listen to me very carefully. This is introduction, part one of the video. I will take what I just said again. I said, if a reaction has a particular delta H, the, re the reverse will have the opposite delta H. So if you revise this equation, that means here will now become, remember here is the reactant and here is the product. So if you take the product by revising the reaction, you have this to be a, plus b now i don't say if you revise the reaction the sign of the delta h must change note it very well so this will be delta h will be equals to minus 100 because of why you revise the reaction and so the value of the delta h will change that is for number one rule number one for rule number two If the molar quantities are multiplied in the equation, so will the delta H. If the molar quantities are multiplied in the equation, so will the delta H. So if the molar quantity, like here now, taking for example A plus B to give you C, and you have a delta H, right? To be equal to plus 100. If I multiply these quantities by 2, this reaction by 2, I have to multiply also the delta H by 2. So if this is 2A plus 2B to give me 2C, the delta H, which is delta H, must be plus 200 because you have to multiply it by 2. And if I like, I will come to this place and say let me multiply everything by 1 all over 2. It also means that the delta H must be divided by 2. Are you with me? Good. That is are the rules. We are going to the two major rules. Another major rule I'm going to draw for you here before I continue with the main calculation proper is if we have a repetition for example please note the rules for example like if I have a plus B to give me C right and then I have C plus D to give me E if these two reaction if they if you like in this reaction now we have C here and I have C here during the calculation that involve this Hess law I'm not going to use it. We're going to see it. We're going to see it in a minute. We're going to see it. So do not worry that much. Now, under this introduction, for example, let me let me solve something right now, real quick. Real, real quick. Example, remember this is an introduction of part one. And immediately I'm done with part one. The next is pure calculation. So you have A plus B to give you C and then let's say the delta H of this reaction is 100 joules and the next thing I have C plus D to give me an E and the delta H is 200 joules and then now if I want to add the two equations if I want to add the two equations I want to add it this C will cancel out because why? Because the first reaction we have C, the second reaction we have C, so it will cancel out. 
I used to understand what I'm saying. So this will now give me A plus B plus D. You have to add the reactant first. Then the next one is the this, the product, which is E. And then I have to also add the delta H together, which will give me the delta H for this reaction will now be 300 joules. That is another law. So according to S law, if we add the two equations, we must also add the uh, the delta, the delta H. So please note it very well because um, we'll be solving a lot of example that involve this. Now the other ones we're going to have to continue is. Now we have this thing on the board. Now listen, if you have this equation, this is the first equation, equation one, this is equation two, and the question is calculate the delta H for this equation three, which is A plus B plus D to give you an E. Now, for we to solve this, remember this is introduction of the video, for we to solve this, we need to adjust this equation 1 and 2 in such a way that when we add them we will get equation 3 so we need to adjust this equation 1 and adjust this equation 2 in such a way that when we add it it will give us this equation 3 which is a guideline for this calculation now focus on the letter that is found in equation 1 and 2 but not in both i have said it before I said focus on letters that are found in equation 1 and equation 2, but not in both. So here, you can see, you don't focus on C. Why? Because C is found in equation 1 and is found in equation 2. So you are not going to focus on it, but you are going to focus on the rest. Why? Because none of them is found in equation 1 and equation 2. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that, that's why I said... Focus on letter that is found in equation 1 and 2, but not in both. Now, the next thing we have, to, we have to do here is, look at it. This is our base equation. So this one, you don't touch this one. But that's what you want to make the, these two equations to look like. Remember, we have to adjust this equation to look like this, right? We have to adjust these two equations to look like equation 3. Now, focus here on equation 1. Look at it very well. You notice that here is 2a. But here, in your main equation, the one you want to make it to look like, this one is 1. So here is 2a. Now, what are you going to do so that this one will look like this one? What are you going to do? You can see that since it's 2a, you have to multiply everything here by half. Multiplying everything by 1 half. Why? So that if it comes here, 2 will divide 2 and you get only an A. So you have to multiply the whole equation. So here will now give you, and I want to write this on one side here. So that, that because I, can't, I don't want to claim this. Here is A plus, all right, let me write it here. What am I doing? So A plus B plus D to give you an E. Now I want to write it this way, right? So, if you multiply by one half, here will be A, and here will be plus B to give you C. Now, remember, if we multiply by one half, I said delta H, you also have to multiply it by one half. And so, that means delta H for this reaction will be 150, right? 150. Now, let's come to, to B. Or let me come to E because B is already here. So let me come to this first equation. Remember, please, there is a trick here. Immediately you have done one in this equation, that's all. You are not going to come back to this equation again. Don't go and say, okay, this is done for let me do for B. It doesn't concern you again. Once you pick one letter and multiply it or divide or whatever you do, you will not touch this equation again. The next thing is for you to come to the second one. That means this one is done. You can't come back to it again. The next thing is come to the second one. The second one is E. Now look at it. The E is at the reactant side. But at the main equation, you want it to look like this. This is your equation. 
at the main equation, your E is at the product side. What am I going to do? That means we have to revise it. Remember the second law. When you revise this equation, the delta sign must change. And so, here right now, I want to revise it. That means here will be C plus D to give me an E. Is it not? So this delta sign will what? Change. And here will change to plus what? Plus 400. It was minus 400. So when you change uh, the equation, the sign change. Now, all you need to do right now is add these two equations. Add them. Now, look at, before we add, we have to cancel out. Look at, we have C here and we have C here. So, I have cancelled it out. That's all. We don't have any equation that's at this first equation and it's at the second. Only that C. They add them together. So, you have A plus B plus D to give you what? E. Can you see that this equation, when you add, is the same thing as this? Then the next thing you have to do is for you to add the delta sign. So, plus 150 and 400, what you should get is 550, right? 550. And that's the answer. The delta H for that reaction is 550. I'm just taking my time to make sure you understand every single thing I'm doing on this video. Because believe me, when we start, and when we start, it will be a very interesting course on its own. Remember, if they give an SI unit, here is juice, here is juice. So the SI unit here is also juice. Please, note that very well, because you can't solve without actually including SI units. So, for the part one, that is all you need to know.